Hey guys, this is just some guys here. Back well, again. Yeah, we're here with Spencer, which is me, and Victor, which is me. Mm -hmm. and today we're going to be talking about uh, all the summer superhero movies that came out. So, the Avengers. The Avengers came in May, that wasn't summer. Well, it's close <laughs> enough. Anyway, yeah, the Avengers, Spider Man, and The Dark Knight Rises. Yes. There will be spoilers sometimes. There will be a lot of spoilers, yes. Alright, now let's simply just talk about the Avengers. First things first, what did you think of it? It was good. It was really good. I think that was like my favorite superhero movie of like so far right now. I really do. <laughs> really? Yeah. But like it's such like an interesting concept and like how they made it very unique. Just like having their own individual movies, and I really can't wait to see how it continues on. And hopefully, I won't get bored of the series. Yeah, I hope they start uh, investing in some different superheroes because I'm a little bit worried that they're doing. Oh, we're doing another Iron Man. We're doing more Thor. We're doing more Captain America. And it's kind of like I want to see what's going on with Black Panther. I think Black Panther will probably be the last one. I'm sure he'll be in eventually, but right now we have Ant-Man and what's the other one? The creator of the, the oh, galaxy? Oh, Guardians of the Galaxy. Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, I think that one's... That one's the most interesting to me. It's mostly because I have no idea about that. I, I don't know anything about it. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, so, yeah, Black Panther. I hope they do that. Maybe Spider Woman. Why? <laughs> we need a we need a person who has spider powers. And Spider Man what might not come soon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh come on. It could happen. It could happen. It, it could. You you did say if the movie was well bad enough it could happen. Oh yeah, the amazing Spider Man. Well, um, yeah. What was your What was your opinion on the Amazing? I kind of hated it. Kind of hated it. Like it was, I mean, like I liked parts of it, like Andrew in it. Um, and then I liked the I liked Martin Sheen as Ben Parker, but I liked Martin Sheen. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone likes Martin Sheen. I hated whoever. I did not like the choice for Aunt May. She just did not seem like an Aunt May, mainly because of how she looked. It's like, uh, she had black hair, kind of, a, you know, 50s. She just did not seem like an Aunt May to me. That was a terrible choice for an Aunt May. Gwen Stacy was okay. I did like the father of Gwen Stacy. I kind of wish that, like, I have this feeling that this was basically the recycled Spider-Man 4 script. Because this is basically what they were going to do. They were going to introduce the Lizard Man in Spider-Man 4. Which sounds pretty okay to me. Like, the thing is, I at times I kind of wish that they just went with Spider-Man 4. Because that way you could have had a better Lizard. You, the guy who played Dr. Connors in the original Spider-Man, he was in the three other Spider-Man. And, like, I think it could have been a much more powerful move if we kind of got to know that character in the before movies. Now, he, the first movie, he's the bad guy. So, um, was Gwen Stacy supposed to be in the fourth one at all? I, I don't know. I mean, like, she was in the third one. Yeah, whatever happened to Gwen Stacy in the third one? Nothing. It's like she dated, like, she was mainly dating Eddie, who was Topher, who was Topher Grace, and eventually became into Venom. Eddie, Topher Grace, Venom. Um, she dated Emo Peter for a little bit, and then she just left. That's good. Good character arc right there. And so basically, do you have any idea, other than the wizard, what the fourth Spider-Man movie would have been like? I honestly think it would have been just like that, more or less. I mean... We'll still have Mary Jane and then Mr. Jameson, and like another thing is, I prefer Mary Jane and Mr. Jameson. I was really disappointed that they were not in. <laughs> um, yeah, it's like, and that would pretty much be it. Well, yeah, Spider-Man wouldn't be a skater, he was in the park down and all that, right? Mm. It's like, I didn't really care for this Peter Parker, he didn't remind me anything of Peter Parker at all. 
it's just like he was just not Peter Parker. He was kind of this douchebag kid <laughs> with spider powers. With spider powers, and it's like um. Again, I liked Andrew for the role. I just didn't like his the part he played as Peter Parker. Yeah, his character. Yeah, the character could have been better. It's like yeah, I think they could give Andrew another chance, but like the only way that I really see it going somewhere is if they find a way to bring it into the Avengers. Because again, at the ending, there's this little cutscene where um. Like, the little, uh, Dr. Connors is in prison, and then this shadowy figure comes out, and he, uh... And it's Nick Fury. No, it's not. <laughs> I want you in here. <laughs> it's like, well, this, he's this shadowy figure, and he, and then he asks, if I believe correct, correctly, it was this, and, did you tell the boy about his father? And then Dr. Connors is just like, you leave him alone, and here I am thinking, how pissed off would I be? I mean, because I have three scenarios of who this could be. It could be Dr. Carnell's crazy conscience, Norman Osborn, who I want it to be, or it could be Peter Parker's father, which would piss me off so much. <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure it's going to be Norman Osborn. Like, my theory for the second one is they're going to do um, the story where the Green Goblin takes Ben Stacy yeah. and falls off the bridge. And, and kills him! <laughs> yeah, and Spider-Man kills him. So. <laughs> but, like, um... And then Mary Jane could be the third one. Or maybe be even in the second one. Later well, on. like, here's the thing about, like, Osborn, they referenced him a lot. But they, like, they never... We never see him. The only thing we know about Osborn is that he's dying. That's all we know. And that's basically all they would share with Osborn. As for, uh, the family, the parents who... Usually in Spider-Man, you don't really care about the parents. They tried to make them more developed, but they didn't really succeed. I just never really cared about the parents. And, well, again, the first half of the movie was kind of slow and boring. Um, what about Harry? Harry Osborn. Harry Osborn was not in. He, it was like, um, he wasn't referenced at all either. I'm assuming that if they're going to put in Norman Osborn, they're going to put in Harry Osborn too. Just tough as that. Just like we're gonna do the whole series again. Harry's gonna be crazy and try to kill Spider-Man. But like, I kind of always, I do kind of see that happening. It's just like hopefully they'll see it in a different way because they tried to make this movie dark and gritty. That's another thing. Um, the movie is like a little bit more dark and gritty than the other Spider-Man movies. Everything is yeah. dark and gritty. It's like, well, the Spider-Man movie, they were like very light, hum very comic book-like movies. I think the Spider-Man movies are like the best comic book movies you can get if you want that actual pure comic book movie. This one, more or less, is like Batman Begins, in a way. Um, more or less. And it's like, there were parts of it that I liked, it's just, at the end of it, my complaints were the same. I just thought it was lazy. I thought it was unfinished. I thought there was more that could have been done. Mm, probably didn't have enough time. Yeah, I guess so, but like, still, you know. And you oh, haven't seen it yet, right? No, and I don't plan on seeing it until it goes to the $2 theater. Oh, okay. At this point. Since everyone who wants to see it has already seen it, so. All the all my friends who want to see it, I've seen it. Has anybody else really liked this movie? People, random people on the internet. But the thing I'm finding is, someone pointed this out in the forum, was that if you didn't like the Raimi films, the, uh, the first Spider-Man movies, you're going to like this. Or like... Or it's just vice yeah. versa. If you did like those, you're not going to like this. Here's the thing, it's like, um... I sometimes get annoyed with, like, uh, if you like this or if you didn't, you, if you liked this part, you probably won't like this, or if you read the book, you probably won't like that. It's kind of the same reason why I didn't care for the Hunger Games. Um, I think that, like, the movie should be, like, targeted towards everyone. I felt like this movie was targeted towards those that were not Spider-Man fans. I think that was probably the <laughs> <laughs> It's like, I mean, it's a good way to get new audiences, which is good, yeah. 
it's a good way to get new York audience. It's a fantastic way to lose old ones. Yeah. <laughs> and I just another person pointed out, like you know, people have been having diverse opinions too, and people who they like Spider Man because it's like, oh, he's somewhat, he has modern day sensibilities because he's like Edward Cullen or whatever the hell that kid's name is from Spider Man. Yeah. I know a lot of people have been comparing it to Twilight 2. Thankfully, I wouldn't go that far. Then again, I should probably see it again. <laughs> the Amazing Spider-Man? Yeah. Or Twilight? Mm. Or both! <laughs> I probably am going to see The Amazing Twilight. <laughs> <laughs> hey, let's make... Uh, what is it? Robert Patterson. He'll be the next Spider-Man. Oh yeah, do you know that's kind of funny because he was actually considered to be the next Spider-Man. I think I remember hearing that. Because it's like they're this, they're this cast list. Two people that were rumored, well three actually, that were rumored to be Spider-Man were well, ironically Robert Patterson, Taylor Lautner, and Daniel Radcliffe. It should have been <laughs> Harry Potter. Yeah, it's like, oh my god, if that was true, I just couldn't take it seriously. <laughs> Would he still be emo, you know? Like, I'm yes, a oh, yes, yes. I'm so depressed. You cannot have a, like, a non-emo Daniel Radcliffe. The other, oh, someone, uh, my brother actually told me this. Did li the lizard remind you of, uh, Voldemort at all? More or less, yeah. It's yeah. like, I kind of noticed a tiny bit of Voldemort. Oh, Poor <laughs> Peter Parker. I, he lost his family. The one thing that I loved about that movie is, like, at the back of the camera it said... When Little grabbed the camera, it said, Property of Peter Parker, please bring back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've heard about that. I pretty much have heard the whole movie at this point from people just because I didn't care. So, so you think you've seen it? <laughs> yeah, I, I've seen it. Alright, well, like, um, here's supposedly the best movie of all time is next, and that is The Dark Knight Rises. I kind of wonder if we should go back to Avengers or not. Oh, we will. Well, I would like to kind of, like, bring up the Avengers a tiny bit more. I don't want to just say it was just great. Well, okay, it was. We'll but throw, like, we need to throw a little bit of shit. Oh, yeah, let's... Okay, well, let's go back to the Avengers, because we could go back and forth like that. We can! What did you like about like the best about the Avengers? Hmm. Pretty much the characters. It's like... I mean, the plot wasn't... That interesting. The plot was like very, very simple. <laughs> I know. <laughs> we need to save the world. Why do we need to save the world? Because this guy who is larger than life and possibly a god wants to destroy it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, Loki. The Avengers versus Loki and the Aliens. Sounds like a nice simple plot to me. Yeah. And I mean, I guess that's the point is that you're supposed to get, you're already interested in the characters because you've seen all the other movies made. Well, maybe like that's kind of a good thing because usually when it comes to comic book movies like <laughs> The Dark Knight Rises, they try to make it more complicated instead of just keeping it simple. At some cases, it, it works like The Dark Knight in general, but like it's a nice, it's simple. It's like everybody likes simple when it comes to, uh, Superhero movies. I mean, like Spider-Man was simple. Mm -hmm. I, if I believe correctly, Iron Man, Fu, and Captain America, they were pretty simple as well. We just like good simple stories. Yeah, I guess though the problem with that though then is, will they be remembered like in years' time? I actually think this one will. Yeah, like um, mainly because of the name. You know, like, simple movies actually tend to be remembered a lot. Like, uh, all those Charlie Chaplin movies, though, constantly remembered. Yeah. They were simple. Psycho was remembered. <laughs> <laughs> that was probably complicated for the time, I guess. Well, it's probably very controversial for the time. Controversial, but a simple, uh, but a simple story, among yeah. the less. It's like, usually, they could always. There's nothing wrong with taking the risks, like, uh, Amazing Spider-Man kind of took that risk, too, by trying to make the story not that simple, and it failed. Like, the Avengers, are, it, they're basically playing it safe, which you could argue could be cowarding, but, like, it's pretty much more of a good thing, because, 
the vendors it's just a safe project you're most likely going to enjoy it because you don't really have to think about all of the stuff there's not a lot of complications to it yeah. I think you know like well this is also just applies to superhero movies like one of the problems is probably staying relevant now unless like superheroes they just stop going okay we're gonna reboot this superhero again is they're gonna keep getting overridden by their reboots like who's gonna really I mean other than the people who grew up with say like the original Batman who's gonna remember it after the, you know all the, the Dark Knight trilogy yeah well like I understand the point of reboots it's like um People want to like make their own story into it and kind of trying to keep the series alive, even for the younger audiences. Like I said, the Amazing Spider-Man, usually the people that are not a big fan of Spider-Man to begin with, like this movie. It's kind of a good way to bring in the younger audience. Um, is there any other criticism we have? Um, There's got to be something wrong. There's like... Like a couple, there's a couple of plot holes in it. Yeah. But that's mostly with the Hulk. And that's basically just the fact that he learns to control his anger at the right moment. Also, he manages to get back to New York. And you know what's, like, I find not, I always thought he did learn how to control his anger. And now he's, like, trying to keep it in, which is good. I mean, like, I thought it was a good way to develop his character by this guy that just been through hell. But still, it's like, if in the Hulk movie, did he, was he not able to control it just fine? Yeah, I'm trying to remember back to, like, we're talking the, the one after the bad one, right? Yeah. It's just a remake. I, I guess technically it's a remake, I don't know. Um, I, I guess he had control of his anchor. It's just, cause like, yeah, I guess in Avengers, the only reason he didn't have control of his anger is because Loki was trying to influence him, so that's why he couldn't prevent him himself from coming to Hulk again. Yeah. Um, well, like, uh, there was an Easter egg that I, that basically said, like, when, you know, when he's meditating, mm -hmm. it could have been that he's either trying to control it. Or Loki was actually supposedly taking him over. Oh. At least that's what uh, the Easter egg description said. I don't understand it, but like. Uh, oh yeah, because it. He stops. Yeah, he stops. He has like a certain period of time where he stops. Oh, so. Yeah. So yeah. And I guess it's one of those. Oh, it might be this. It might be that. You know, we can analyze this from any position to let's say I could do something. So. Which, by the way, Mark Ruffalo did a pretty good job in the movie. Yes, he did. I mean, like for a lot of people, he was the best part of the movie. I once, guess. Yeah. Once again, I liked I like all the actors. Yeah, and um, well, Samuel Mr. Agent Coulson. <laughs> <laughs> I I really kind of hope they find a way to write him back in because they're gonna write back Bucky. Why not write back Agent Coulson? They're gonna do a Nick Fury movie. True, but that's a prequel. I don't exactly. know. I don't know why it's a prequel, but well, what else are they gonna do with Nick Fury? I was kind of hoping that they will make it like a continuation, make it a part of the continuable story. But it will explain his character. We already know his. Uh, it's like I feel really. We just know he's the he's the handler from the government yeah. agency of Shield. He's a pretty mysterious figure. Yeah. Well, like we're just saying, it's like I think you could still do the same thing with more of a continuing of the story. Well, I don't. Know. I mean, I don't know how they would do that though, because all it would be is just. Him in the background, going, all right, you guys do this. You well, like he could do some, he could do his own thing. <laughs> Go on a mission. Yeah, why not? He's more of a, I guess, like a general at this point in Shield. You know? Yeah, he's the, he's the director of Shield. Mm -hmm. It'd be a little bit silly if he was still going on ma uh, missions like an agent, you know, like <laughs> a field agent. Yeah, so, I would if I was a general. I mean, that's just me. <laughs> that's just you know. <laughs> but yeah, so I think they just want us to explain it and we'll find out maybe why he has that eye patch. That could be fun. 
That that could be fun indeed. Yeah, and you'll get to see Agent Coulson again. True. I mean, like, I still think it. I mean, like, it might be ridiculous, but you think there actually is a chance that they could write him back because they're going to bring back uh, Bucky? Well, like, they could bring him. The silliest thing way I could think is just oh, that was just a clone. That was actually a name. Yeah, but like, the thing is, what? Isn't there a character in the Marvel Universe called the Grim Reaper or something they could bring back? Or like, or there's this, I remember watching the Avengers TV show. It, she's the full enemy, but like, she could raise the dead? Okay. So why, so I was thinking that that could be the possible storyline for Captain America 2, and that's how Bucky could come back. Yeah. As far as I know how Bucky comes back is he didn't actually... Died. Oh, okay. He thought he died. Well, actually, he was. He just ended up somewhere and was caught by the Red Skull, and then he became an agent for him. Hmm. Through like, uh, like hypnosis, basically, and mind control. Uh, I, yeah. Well, like, Bucky is like. I think he will eventually join the Avengers as well. Because he always has been like Robin of Captain America. Yeah, pretty much. But, well, if he comes back in the Captain America 2, he's probably going to be a villain. At least part of, like, yeah. part of the story will have him as the villain. He would lose his arm, though, right? He he lost his arm, didn't he? He lost his arm, yeah. That's the Winter Soldier, yeah. It's just, he just has, like, a robot arm. Hmm. Depending on how they do it, I don't know. We, we're not really too familiar with the comic books. At least not a Captain America. Yeah. Well, yeah, we're more familiar with shows and stuff yeah. like that. So. I tried to, like, uh, get more information on Captain America and Bucky. I could just find information on Captain America. No, but I could never seem to get information on Bucky. Ever. Just put it on Wikipedia. Oh, okay. A I Marvel, just, a Marvel would be. Really? Because I basically just <laughs> used YouTube. <laughs> For research? Yeah, that's that's my research. I use YouTube. <laughs> okay. Can you tell your cat that she's not supposed to bite the wire? <laughs> well, she'll do it anyway. So. <laughs> okay. Um. So next, um, I guess we should finally go to the Dark Knight Rises, since that's the moment everyone's been looking forward to. Yes. In fact, I want to put something out on IMBD. It is it has earned the spot of the top of number ten. On the top 220, 250 list. Uh, oh, it's the 10 best movie? Yeah. It's in the top 10? Well, like, it's number 10 for on the 220, 250, 250 list and on that, IMBD. That's of all time, right? Yes, that's of all time. Where's the Dark Knight stand? Number 8. What about Batman Begins? I think 120. <laughs> so I basically wanted to share the thoughts of that. I don't think it deserved that spot. Wait, what's number one? The Shawshank Redemption, a Morgan Freeman movie. <laughs> Maybe that's why it's up there. <laughs> They're all Morgan Freeman movies. <laughs> <laughs> well, Godfather one and two are like two and three, so. Well, Morgan Freeman is in the two. He's oh. just in the background. Okay. He's just he waves. <laughs> But anyway, um, so you don't think it deserves that spot? No, I don't. It's just like the movie was okay, okay, o okay. okay. <laughs> it it wasn't that good. It was kind of disappointing, really. Um, I mean, it had some strong <coughs> elements in it. All right. What were those strong elements? Catwoman and Bane. <laughs> <coughs> But Bane, <laughs> not so much. <coughs> yeah, Bane, uh, Bane can be a little bit hard to understand. Well, Joseph Gover Levitt was good in it, I thought. Yeah. He, but he's good in everything. Yeah. And hopefully he does come back in some kind of weird. Oh, unless they continue it, I which they could because they made enough money. <coughs> yeah. I just think they'd be a little bit of a cop out since I kind of, and also I do kind of want them to get away from the Nolan verse with the DC heroes. Mm -hmm. Do something that's more akin to Avengers, where they can do wacky magic stuff and uh, high science, like high science fiction stuff. Yeah. Do you think Joseph Gordon-Levitt should be the Batman in it? 
I do think he should be. Do you think he should share the name Bruce Wayne? Because I honestly think it could be interesting if the next Batman was not Bruce Wayne. You know, it'd be even a weirder twist if he came back as Nightwing. True, that's possible. But if and just not have a Batman, we just have Nightwing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like it. Speaking of which, I could kind of see a Nightwing movie. Yeah. I mean, like, it might be, like, Catwoman, but it will be a nice try. It would probably be better than yeah. Catwoman. At least he's actually, you know, a hero. Oh, and Catwoman's not a hero? Catwoman's... Well, I don't know. She keeps going back and forth. She's a flip-flop person. Oh, okay. She doesn't deserve her own movie. True. <laughs> Especially of what the movie they gave her. I don't know how they came up with... Let's make a Catwoman movie. Well, Catwoman is a very popular character in the Batman franchise. It's like, I guess it would be understandable if they did, but I could imagine them making a Robin movie first, or better yet, a Teen Titans movie. Yeah. <laughs> Why? What's wrong with that? I don't know. I don't really care. Okay. That much. Okay, well, what was your opinion on The Dark Knight Rises? Um... Pretty much, it was it was good. Um, I actually have seen it twice now. Okay. And I did like it a little bit more in certain parts the second time. I thought it was o I thought the pacing was okay for the most mm. part. I hated the pasting in the beginning. It's like I dreaded the pasting in the beginning. <laughs> yeah, I I don't know. I just I kind of liked it a little bit more and. I did find a little bit more flaws with it. I, there's the, all of the, the flaws I already pointed out, which is, we're not to you guys with the victory here, but just the fact that when they're doing the uh, armed robber getaway and Bane turns around and just the guy who's leading the chase of the robbers and Batman is just like, don't go after him. Keep going after <laughs> Batman. We have the entire police force going after Batman, but we can't send one guy back to get Bane. At all. That's not possible. Which is like, what the hell would the... The police would never do that. <laughs> oh, dumbass policeman would. And that's the... That was but like, I like how Joseph is like, so shouldn't we worry about the other guy? Oh, he's just a arm robber. It's not like he's going to take over the city. Yeah. <laughs> and then also the... Later on when... Let's send everyone... All the police officers down into the sewers. <laughs> That makes perfect sense, you know? I would, like, send maybe five. <laughs> In a city the size of what is roughly New York City size. Yeah. Maybe a little bit less, but... Yeah, let's just send everybody down there. Except for, like, three cops. <laughs> <laughs> that makes perfect sense. Oh, and one of them was badly injured recently. That makes perfect sense. Right, well, like, um... Won't they... Doug Walker kind of pointing this out, but weren't they planning on retiring Jim Gordon in the uh, movie? Yes, they were. That didn't go anywhere, though. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I guess that's a useless line. It's just kind of like, hey, everything's so good, we don't even need Gordon anymore. Yeah. And they didn't reference the joke of Ruby, your claws hurt so much. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Ruby is my cat. Right? <laughs> um, but yeah. Um. So there was that. Uh, what other flaws did you have with it? Uh, well, like, I kind of hated the fact that it was more of a sequel to the first one than the second one. Yeah. It's like uh, the second one did. It seemed to me like you could get rid of the second movie. You probably could, but I think the problem is with the fact that Heath Ledger died. Because maybe for this third one, they were going to do something where they had kind of a maybe Bane and the Joker or something. Like yeah, that. it's like I said this before. It's like um. I think if Heath Ledger was still alive, the movie would be different, in a way. Because, um, I'm not sure if I mentioned this on the last commentary, but there was supposed to be kind of a more bigger finale, I felt. They were supposed to have the Joker, the Riddler, 
Hugo Strange and Catwoman. Those were the main villain ideas that they were throwing around. Even Robin was supposed to be in here, in there, but Christian Bale said no. No Robin. Despite the fact he was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I probably was just... So you think... Uh, Boyer, David Boyer, just put that whole Robin reference in there. Like, Screw you, man. <laughs> <laughs> or like, are you? Oh, by the way, are you saying you're saying Christian Nolan, right? No, Christian Bale. Okay, you're actually saying that. Yeah. yeah, he Christian Bale, the actor, did not want Robin in the movie. Fuck <laughs> <laughs> you. Well, why didn't he want Robin? I thought it would interfere with the dark atmosphere. Okay, whatever you say. Um, yeah, I don't know what really else. I mean, I could just keep pointing out flaws, I guess. Why did Batman blow up a building at the end? <laughs> <laughs> what if people were living in that building? <laughs> we could, like, always ask that question. It's like, why Batman keeps blowing stuff up? Yeah, if he's trying to protect... Um, the one thing I did notice, too, in my second viewing of it was, um, the whole, you know how they, first, him, Batman and Bane fighting the sewers, and Bane just kicks his ass? Yeah. Did you notice that when they fight again, they do it in the light, and Batman pretty much just kicks his ass? Yeah. <laughs> Symbolism. Yeah. It was kind of interesting, like, just a small minor detail. That Batman was actually fighting in the daylight. Yeah. He's embraced the light, and therefore he can find Yeah. Because he has hope. <coughs> I did like the part where Catwoman blew up Bane. <laughs> Everybody liked that. Anne Hathaway was a good choice for Catwoman. Yes. Uh, it's like, um, I did kind of find it annoying. That Alfred just left. <laughs> yeah, you wanted him to die, didn't you? No, I wanted him to live. I mean, like, but that's the thing. It's like, Alfred never really shown that he was bothered by the fact that he was Batman before. Well, it's been eight years. Mm -hmm. That's the other thing. What the hell would he have done? What the hell did he do for eight years, Bruce Wayne? He boom. He became a cripple. <laughs> yeah, and how did he become a cripple? I don't know. It's like they never really explained that. They did he fall down the stairs? They mentioned uh, he got into an accident once, but like, it's like what kind of an accident? Yeah, I think that's the other problem too. Is just because there are because there's always these flaws people point out, like, oh, how did Batman get back to Gotham City in time? And the way I was thinking with that was, oh, he left earlier. It's just the film didn't bother telling us that he left early. No, are you sure? <laughs> I just, I'm just i making up excuses. Because like, that could be. Maybe they had a whole scene where it's like he was on his plane or whatever. And that other thing, how he gets back to Gotham City itself when it's surrounded by the military. Yeah, how did he do that? <laughs> because you didn't notice that he takes the bat... The bat. Maybe he bought the visible plane from Wonder Woman. Maybe. But he does take the bat back to Wayne Manor, which is outside the city limits. Or near, I don't know. And just takes it back. Maybe he takes it back over during the night. So mm -hmm. no one sees him. And I don't know how he finds Catwoman, though. I, I'm not sure about that. Oh, well, that was just a lucky guess. He's the greatest detective. Mm -hmm. So I guess you could do that. It's just the film doesn't bother to explain any of this, so you have to make up excuses for why this happened. But you see, you shouldn't have to do that. And that's why complicated stories will not work all the time. <laughs> exactly. If you want, like, grand dose set to, like, eight years after the second movie and, and set in a span of at least six months. Yeah. Again, it's like, I really didn't notice much of... It's like, I felt you could have skipped the second movie. Like, the joke pretty much meant nothing in that movie. So. Yeah. I don't know. I did think it seemed to have much of a choice. Yeah. We couldn't get someone else to replace the Joker. They thought that'd be disrespectful. And, you know. Well, like, I disagree. I mean, in a way, I kind of disagree. Because they did it before. <laughs> um, yeah. I, I don't know. But, find a replacement for him? Yeah, I mean, like, I guess 
they were going to consider it. I guess they just thought it would be in bad taste, which is understandable. Um, Here's another interesting question. Do you think the reason The Dark Knight... Like, I really like The Dark Knight, but do you think the reason why it's so liked is because he Ledger died? Um, there have been people that were wondering that, but I'm honestly, I don't think so. Because it's like, okay, I'm going to use a quick example. Because that usually never happens. You know Burning Mac, right? Yeah. You know his last movie was Old Dogs? Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, that was a terrible movie, but it didn't really get ranked up because of Burning Mac's untimely death. Then again, I understand Heath Ledger's death was a bit more tragic. Um, well, also... But, he like, Heath Ledger's performance was very, very good. Like, okay... Maybe it could have played a factor in it, but it would still be a great movie that deserved the spot it did. Like, was Bernie Mac's performance in Old Dogs good? I haven't seen it though. Oh, uh, like, and from what I understand, it was just a cameo. Well, <laughs> <laughs> how does that how does that figure the same? It doesn't. <laughs> well, like, well, because there have been a couple actors that like, uh, they died, and the last movie was a bad one. Yeah. It's, and they were in those leading roles as well. Um, Did John Belushi have that happen to him? I think John Belushi's last movie was okay. What? His last movie was Neighbors. I haven't seen it yet. Okay. Yeah, hey, I wasn't sure if it was that drama or not. No, the drama was in the middle. Okay. Um. But yeah, I don't know. I just, I guess this is just a quick uh, thing to maybe connect Avengers and I guess Spider-Man as well and the Dark Knight Rises. It's just fun that they pretty much just all hate the government. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that's like the whole Dark Knight trilogy is basically, hey, we can't reduce crime because the police are either just completely incompetent or they're just completely corrupt. <laughs> the second movie, they're just still corrupt and incompetent. And then the third movie, the whole national government is just incorrect. And the police as well. <laughs> and, I don't know, and then Avengers, or at least confident, they're just really kind of malicious with the whole, with the S.H.I.E.L.D. agency. Yeah, they're all chill. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Damn it, Nick Fury. Man, Nick Fury was such a jerk in that movie. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. But well, at least he was confident. Yeah. And not correct. Just malicious. Just malicious. And then Spider-Man, the policeman, of course, was stupid as well. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that nice? It's like, get Spider-Man. Okay, fine. <laughs> <laughs> yep, the whole New York police are just in trouble. Because, like, there was a similar scene to where, every, there, where the lizard was, like, get to the Dark Knight, where the lizard was attacking the city, and, like, they're on to the lizard, but then they find Spider-Man, and then they just go after him. <laughs> Why? Why movie do you need to do? I mean, like Spider-Man eventually fixes this and get and gets the policeman on the side, on his side, including uh, what's the father's name of Gwen Stacy? I have no idea. Okay, but well, like, he, how about Officer Stacy? That okay, fine. <laughs> it, her last name is Stacy. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Officer Stacy. <laughs> Right, so eventually what happened is uh, Spider-Man and Officer Stacy both had a battle with the Lizard. The Lizard killed Officer Stacy, and then Spider-Man just beat the Lizard. Yay! Poor oh, Officer Stacy. And, like, another thing that happened at the end was, like, um, Officer Stacy, I hate calling him that, he said, Stay oh, can you do me just one favor? Stay away from my dog. Wait, so he figured out that he was Peter Parker? Yeah. Well? Yeah, because, like, Spider-Man told him that he was... Well, he took off the max. So he found out that it was Peter Parker. He was like, I want my daughter to be stay safe. Please stay away from her. And then Peter Parker was like, okay, I will. Next movie, stay Gwen Stacy will break her neck. <laughs> and don't they get back together, like, for the last scene, too? No. They don't? They actually break up. Okay. I mean, like, they... There's this one heartwarming scene at the end to where 
Peter would tell a joke to her, and then she would laugh. And that, and then the movie ends like that. It's beautiful. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. So, is there anything else? Uh, you want to talk about final schools out of ten? Hate doing that. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> okay. Um. I hate you. So I think. Out of five. Okay. <laughs> Why do you like out of ten? Uh, it just seems like much better. <laughs> okay, fine. We'll do it out of five. Uh, the Avengers is a five. Okay, I agree with that. Spider Man is a two. Okay, I guess I agree with that. <laughs> the Dark Knight Rises is a three. I might go with three point five. Okay. It's a big difference. Sure. <laughs> it is. Um. Well, yeah. That's pretty much it. Um, yeah, it's like, I mean, do you have any other final thoughts? Not really, no. Okay. Alright, well, this has been Just Some Guys, and we are signing off, and we will talk to you guys, or talk at you guys later. Later. Yes. Oh, and also, one important final note, we will pay, we pay our respects to Stanley. <laughs> Because he's responsible for all these movies. Yes. Like, I love that Stanley scene in The Dark Knight Rises. That scene was so awesome. And he just comes out and just punches Bane in the face. <laughs> yeah, and then he blows up Bane too. <laughs> yeah, he was so sexy in that movie too. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, well, we'll talk at you later. Goodbye.